as we pick up Stop, Look, and Listen. And this idea of this theme of Stop, Look, and Listen occurred to me that it's a simple way whenever I was a kid seeing that, that always at the railroad tracks. But then there were four specific ones for each one. And that's what we're working on. So we've done the four with Stop already. It's amazing how these things go so quickly. Uh, but the four that we've seen with stop had to do with, first of all, solitude and silence. It's a very thing, it's a thing that's very remote from most men. Uh, but it's solitude and silence, making spaces for that, and, and then carrying your silence with you so that you become a contemplative in action. And then we talked about the idea of attention to the journey, by which I mean life in the presence of God. So living each day uh, throughout the course of the day, seeking to find little exercises you can do to remind you about his presence so you can train yourself to become more spring-loaded to his presence at all times. So that's why I love that thing that I use all the time, and I'm hoping you're all doing it again. What am I using every day? Come on, I just what do I do? The three questions, first of all, and then three statements. What are the three questions? What do you seek? Who do you say I am? Do you love me more than these? And I, I actually use it in the context, and it's amazing how it adapts itself. Sometimes I reverse the order, too. And, uh, who, and uh, do you love me more than these? And then, then uh, who do you say I am and what do you see? But then the other one, what's the other one I use? I'm here. Trust the Father, abide in the Son, walk by the Holy Spirit. I want you to use that. It's, it's, you must grasp the fact that, that this isn't a laity versus professional idea here. This isn't clergy versus laity. There's this nonsense about the, the separation of the sacred and the secular. Everything matters. Everything becomes spiritual and there's splendor in the ordinary. And that's what I'm going to be looking at as well. So attention to the journey. But now it was, uh, th then we saw attention to the story, the four acts, and that we are living in a story that's, that began well and it's going to end well. So now we go from stop, we go to look. And f the first one of those is going to be learning to see what others miss. And I've made some notes to myself just to see which things I might pull a few of these things out. Of learning to see what others miss. And... Uh, this is an example of something that I tried to do where I love to take people and show them how to see nature. Most people don't watch it or pay, pay attention. So you can, how do you pay attention? How do you notice? I want to show you a couple of things. So when this, this is when I was at the Cove in May and we had a, a group of people here. And um, so the rhododendron happened. It was the rhododendron and the mountain laurel were out at the same time. And it just I, I, this was a, at the beginning, but I was doing the studies into the nature of each of these things and, and the, the structures. And, the, and I'm just discovering as I'm going myself, because a lot of things, and you notice, but after a while, you see certain patterns and structures that you didn't see before, including this particular one on one of the leaves. And, uh, and, and the way it works and the way it points to the, the structure over here. It's amazing uh, the way it, this goes to that. And then we went, to, and then I showed the mountain laurel and the beauty of that and explaining the structures again and ex uh, looking at the wonderful fine, fine details. This, oh, this was azalea. Yes, I'm sorry. Mountain laurel comes up. I'm sorry. I just realized this is this beautiful native azalea. These native azaleas. I, uh, I had one of these just like this in my backyard, and it died. Unfortunate. I love these things, though. Uh, this, uh, of course, the dogwood was in, is splendid. I mean, this is just absolute max. Uh, and you just look at the structures of that, and you want to appreciate. And so we were looking at the, the the fine details of these structures. And if you just pay attention and look at the look at these, and of course, no two leaves will ever be identical. That's which which is an amazing thought. So you see that, um, again, another image of this, of this tree. And then the mountain laurel. And this was just splendid. It was absolutely stupendous to look at this. So I took a close-up of this. And you just look at the structure within that, you see? It's gratuitous beauty. It's, it's overwhelming, you see? It's God having fun. It's, he's, he's showing off. And, and most people don't notice. But if you just paid attention and you stopped and noticed that, that's a worship moment. Because what you're doing is, and he's saying, I'm glad you noticed. Because rarely do we notice his work, but his works and his ways are seen. This reminds me of um, this, this theme from Handbook to 
renewal, uh, renewal, where I have a whole series of verses of affirmations about God as the creator, that you put everything under your hands. The heavens declare the glory of God and the skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. So it's there for us to see. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. The world and all who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth their starry host. He summoned from the earth the rising of the sun to play where it sits. Every animal in the forest, every cattle, the cattle in the south and fields, every bird, everything that moves in the field, everything is filled with his glory. And you can see the psalmists meditating upon that and reflecting upon that. And we've kind of separated ourselves in many ways. And we have our own external systems where we have a kind of a carapace that set, sets us apart in our technology from nature more and more. And so we have to make an intentional effort to notice that, that everything comes, you establish the sun and the moon. And so naturally, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff from astronomy, and you, you already know that. So when I look at the uh, astronomy and I look at the uh, glory of God and this um, web telescope deep field image that you could actually magnify many times, I wish I could ha have the full image to zoom in on, but it's, it's a world of a wonder. And we're getting to see things that we, that we uh, never saw before. Now, naturally, you can't look up and see this. But although it's still glorious to see and to behold because there's something, there's nothing, uh, no substitute we're just looking up for about 20 minutes. And if you have a little bit of a problem with arrogance or ego, look up at the sky for about 10 or 15 minutes, and uh, you begin to get a perspective. You're not looking up, you're looking down, there's no up and down. You're immersed in this mystery, and it's beyond your imagination how really huge it, it really is. Uh, the um, glory of God, and we get to see it in the way that was never seen before. And the, the beauty, the glory of all these, uh, these components here that continue to display his glory and we get to see the, that lovely, be that, uh, be that beauty. Just, the, why is it that we're so drawn to Saturn? And, I just, and, and I've shown you this before, that's, the, that's our planet you see, through, seen through Saturn's rings. So it's a kind of a humbling thing to get that perspective and, and to look at the glory of nature now. So I, get, I, I collect these, these, these pictures from um, uh, astronomy picture of the day, you see, and so it's, uh, it's, it's kind of easy for me to collect these things. But I, I look at them and, um, because we now are capable of seeing things we never could see before. And so as I just go through these things, these are different colors of the moon at different times as well. It's, it's amazing the diversity, the richness, the beauty of God's created order. Um, I, one of my favorite things to look at is the surface of Jupiter. It's, it's roiling with beauty and constantly changing. So we are privileged to see what others have missed. And so it's a beautiful thing to, to behold the glory of God in this way. So as I, as I was working with these people then, as, so I took, them, I took them through, and then um, again, the, the peonies and how beautiful they were. So it was, I didn't have to go very far. We were going to go on a walk, but it really was only, only about, a, about a few hundred feet because everything was right there. And just for them to see the structures, the leaves, and so forth, and these, this allium. And I wanted them to see underneath it and how the structure forms itself. And this spherical geometry that comes from each of these individual flowers. And so there's a world within a world that's more amazing than we would ever dream. But you look at the structure of this one this little individual. One of the things I'm hoping in heaven to be able to do is to zoom down orders of magnitude and zoom back out. That would be a lovely ride. And I have a, a strong feeling, if we can't do that, it'll be better. It won't be worse. So whatever you dream, whatever you imagine, I can promise you, it's only a sign or a hint of a greater good to come. That's why we, it, it, we, that, you, that term, zainzuk, longing, this idea of the patches of God light on the woods of our experience that C.S. Lewis describes, patches of beauty and intimacy and adventure. So when you see beauty, you want to share it. It's something that you want to make it available to others. So this is what I did. I took this photo looking upside down on the thing. Because you see, that's a complex structure there, how to make it all work out, the engineering involved in that. And yet the thing, it's not just metal. 
it's, if every cell is alive and every cell is more complex than the city of Atlanta. So when you begin to realize we're dealing with mystery, the salvia as well, and just wonderful beauties of all these descriptions. So we had a lovely time together and I collected those flowers then with that. So I, I, I do studies of these things, even my own fern. I did a study with my fern, um, and here is, you can see the major structures. I wonder if I can write on this thing, I don't know. Yeah, I think I can. Yeah, I should go on. So if, if I, so you can see the, there's the overall structure of the fern here, but this, this is actually the secondary. The whole, the whole thing is one giant plant, and so we, we can see uh, that there's that structure, and then the next one in is, uh, so there's the plant as a whole, and then each one of these becomes its own shape its own form, its own uh, style. And then within that, the next level down was one of these. So this is, now this is the third level down, you see, and it's, it's imitating that. It's the same thing, it's like fractal, and it just goes down and down and down. It's because it transcends orders of magnitude. And then if we want another level down, we can have another level down, if I can find it for you here. Yeah, so we, we go right down here, you see, and so you can see, if you go backwards from that, there's the whole of the, the plant as a whole, and then you see that, that as as one of the one of the giant fronds, and then with that, it's a reduced version. Then there's a reduced version. They always have a way of going to the right. It's interesting these things, as generally speaking. Um, you don't know why this structure is there, and uh, and then down to that. So there's like five levels of magnitude, and then the way it coils up and forms new uh, structures. You see, like a like a little cello, uh, this, this structure. And then you look at this. This is a fern that's um, of a different nature. It's like gossamer. It's like uh, it's like um, wonderful uh, lace, as it were. And then this other colored ferns. I, God knows I love ferns. And so the beauty of the colors and so forth. And this is in my backyard as well. And then I look at, I look at these, these structures here, these, these little fronds here, these little spores rather. And no two of these will ever have the same exact pattern of spores, these spores in the back. So it's gratuitous beauty that God just keeps on going on and on and on so that you just look at this beauty. And so this is my fern study, you see. Um, I have my Malaysian orchid study too because I had a Malaysian orchid, um, and then you, you see how it, as it grows and it becomes more and more complex, these, these structures. So there's different layers of the structuring uh, that, that you see going on here. And then it gets um, more elegant, and then you see these marvelous structures that are actually um, patterns that go around one and like this and that, this one like this one, and then each of them has this radiation that radiates from here, and then each of the, the structures, the geometry of that is so elegant that it's a, it's a wonder of, uh, it's a work of wonder. And then the next level here, you see the color and the shape, and then there, there are flowers on the end of it. You see these little tiny flowers on the end of that that suddenly begin to appear, and each one of them could be magnified as well. So again, I'm, I'm seek, trying to see and notice and study this, and look at the structure, how it works its way down, and there are th on the X, Y, and Z axis, it has three symmetries that I was observing as well. So it's a wonderful thing to observe. Look at these flowers, look at the structure, and then it bloomed again, um, and it formed this, look at this marvel. You see the pentagonal structure, it goes down, iterates itself. And then it formed other ones, these purple ones, which were actually uh, seeds. So they're it's of a different nature, these little seeds. Then I was just looking at the root structure. So I love these kinds of things. Um, you must think I'm nuts. But, um, but I do this for a reason, because it forces me to see what I would otherwise miss. That's really what it comes down to, things that I would otherwise not see. And you know I've done collections of these things worth with the beauty of God and the, uh, the beauty in the natural world. So I have collections of these images that look at the microcosm, the midicosm, and the macrocosm. So here's the macrocosm, the microcosm here. Um, and so you go back and forth and you see the in incredible, intense variety of the works of God that are, in, that are astonishing. So you see the, on every order of magnitude, this is, this is an object, no one even knows what this thing is. This, this is um, 
It's, it's a Hoag's object, they call it. Don't know what it is because there's nothing like it. Um, but uh, this filled, look at these. Don't tell me those things evolved into leaves. You see, because you see, it's all or nothing. Either it works or it doesn't. If it began to have a leaf-like appendage, but it really didn't look do the full trick, then it would then natural selection would have eliminated it. It's all or nothing. You'd have to have thousands of positive mutations all at once for it to achieve that kind of a thing. So the more we're learning about these things, look at just the, the beauty of the structure of this. You see? Note these things, and note that you're talking, to, you're talking about an artist whose work transcends our greatest uh, sub-creations, you see. It's, and and th we begin to realize this is the elegance of the one that we sp of whom we speak. Here he's strutting along, you see. There's a kind of a, I just love it. He's shooting at, look at me, beware of me. I'm sticking at this, this appendage here. Uh, and this guy with his little... They look like little rubbery legs. You see little fingers and so forth, like, like gummies. It's a living gummy. <laughs> so again, look at the, the beauty of the variety in this. this when, you, when you see these, uh, these creatures, these cephalopods, um, these cuttlefish, and then the, 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 the birds feeding one another, and then his, these bizarre creatures on every order of magnitude. Look at these. These orchids, you see, that, that they look like birds. Isn't that amazing? And then marvels about octopus. And uh, so just the, this, the cycle of a leaf, the, this, the, the elegance of this. Why does it need to have that much color? Why does it have to have much, that much beauty? It's gratuitous. It's God's, it's God's displaying himself for those who would see him. And just that the, the antenna itself and the, the compound eye, could, you, could do, uh, you could study that the rest of your life, just that, that one species, and never grasp it. So we see the glory of God manifested in so many ways, and we fail to notice it. We fail to appreciate it. And if we see what he's really doing, and he holds this world together in this way, can we really trust him with our lives? So what, what we learn from this is we begin to see. This is one we can know, and we can love, and we can trust. Look at the elegance of this coloration. And just the, the feathers that are involved. And notice the beak as well, that it picks up the very color of that. So why is that necessary? Because he loves to make wonders. And so it, you begin to appreciate the glory of the one who made it by looking at his work and his world and his patterns. Speaking of patterns, I have a book that I love to use, and it's, it's called Patterns in Nature. And it's, um, it's about this concept here where you see in God's glory um, all kinds of patterns, whether they're, um, they're fractals or spirals or uh, chaos and flow. And you just begin to look at the, na the nature of this, this symmetry. And you can see the glory of God in so many ways that, that are intriguing and um, just mind-blowing. These pollens, these microscopic pollens, 400,000 different kinds of pollens like this, and they're all marvels. You see, just absolute wonders that we begin to behold. So on every order of magnitude, you can see his patterns, his work, his ways, and his purposes that just st stagger the imagination. And so this is where we're dealing with fractals, with mathematics. So I, I, I love to study nature because it amplifies. It's like a book that reveals the character of God. I've shown you my caterpillars, haven't I? My 100 caterpillars book. Of course, because yeah. I'm very pleased with these caterpillars, because no two of them are alike, and you don't know what, what on earth that thing does. Nobody knows. But each one, it has a purpose. We can't figure it out, but there's a purpose in that. You see the variety, the strange nature of these things, and they, they appear to have no actual connection with the actual product, with the moth or the butterfly that comes out. You can't figure out how this would become that in the process of, of, of its transformation, its uh, radical change in his metamorphosis into that adult. It's unbelievable. So you look at the patterns of God and you see um, how he loves diversity. This is a wild one here, you see. You see, why do you need this little guy swinging around like that? So you see, it would be very simple. If, if it was just evolution, it would have stopped with the sponge because it's a perfect, re, 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 it's, it's, its survival is perfect. 
So you don't need to have an evolutionary model that would make it have a greater uh, survival capacity. But it just goes on and on. So I just love the variety of God in this, in this nature, but also the consequences that they produce because they are beyond imagination when you look at what actually is produced by these wonders. And as I said before, I'm going to come up with one I really like. I like them all, but uh, this one is particularly splendid to me. Um, just the, the symmetry, we love symmetry. And you move, zoom into here and you see that. I think I showed you this other one, didn't I? The, um, this website that shows you you can zoom in. Have I shown you this? It's fun. Pick one. Because, uh, see, you can do this. It's not, uh, you, can, you can play. We, and now we have more access to things that we ever uh, could have dreamed of before. What would be a good one to, to zoom in on? Just to, again, and whenever I do it, it's like worship for me. It's, a, it's just what it is, it's worship. Because I see what on earth has, has, what is, hath he wrought? So let's, t let's, take, um, let's take this shadow dragon here. And we pull it, and we can zoom in, you see, and we look at those eyes, and it, it gets the detail as it goes further in, you see, so that you're talking about each one of those is a compound eye. How is it, and it has two of them, so it has depth of field. How on earth can it put all that together and put it in a three-dimensional array and work in this, this way? And you just see the incredible structures that are involved that are beyond imagination and how all these things work together, these like little windows, like fat. see how it fills in the details as you go in? Because it's, it's, look at that, see it now, it fills in the details. So I just love to look at this beauty of God because it's beyond our imagination, really, in many ways. So I, I enjoy that immense, immensely. So seeing these things is a, is a great good. Um, I, I, actually, one other I wanted to show you. Again, I, I use this and I have these because they just display marvels and wonders. It's right there for us to see. And if we appreciate that and share that, you become a... It's, one of the things I talk about and I want you to cultivate is the second um, naivete. I've told you about this before. The first naivete is your uh, childish. And you learn to put away childish things, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 13. But there's another naivete that you don't want to miss, but most men, most men do, most people do. It's the second naivete. It's a childlikeness, a childlike wonder and awe and surprise, and you're curious and you're amazed. You see, when did we stop using our imagination and, and drawing and creating and doing things of that nature? So I invite you to then to really uh, come to see things and to see them in a new way and to see the glory of God in, the, in ways we haven't seen before. I have my own collections of pictures as well um, that I've taken. So what you have here is just, um, again, these are photos of things in my garden. And I just love to look at these things. Uh, this, these, these, um, this, the, 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 the wonderful colors that you see, and it's this fern study, you zoom down into that again. And so I see that, and it's, it's for me the glory of God, and I see the patterns and the beauty, the structure, and you, get, you can almost get lost in the beauty of the natural world. I mean, that's a marvel to see. And sometimes I'll put music on with it as well. Um, but I just love the beauty of the created order, you may have noticed, even chickens, <laughs> believe it or not, there's some beautiful chickens. Uh, how do, what, well, this, this one really is full of itself here. You know. uh, but, but this one, you just see, why do you need this craziness, you see? This crazy diversity and creativity. You just see this thing here. And why it, it needs to be this way. And then the eggs that you get from these, and just they're pleasant to be, behold. So you see, even there, I mean, this is sumptuous. So I've never seen a chicken like that. So that, that one's a little bit wild, you see this one. But again, everything you look at is, is full of marvel and wonder uh, for those who have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. Beetles, you know I love. And so I just see the variety of um, crazy complexities of, 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 of uh, insects, the eyes themselves, and why 
they're formed in this way and what on earth all that is about, you see. So again, I want you to cultivate, and one last thing I'll show you that, that comes to my mind is, um, some, I just did, started to do a study of trees. So some things I was looking at and some things I've seen in my travels of just beautiful trees in different places. And just noticing that, the glory of that, that we often pass over and we don't see what's right there in front of us. And so there's an elegance and a marvel and a wonder if we just begin to train ourselves to see what others miss. And I think in doing so, then you're amplifying the created order. And in amplifying that, you're really looking at it as a resource to pull, point beyond itself to the living God who made it all. So this to me is uh, one of the great glories. And I didn't photograph that one, I haven't been there. But again, marvels and wonders all. So I, I call your attention to these things just as, to, as a way of seeing how we can look at the marvels of God and be, and be grateful and, and see the glory of God. One last thing I cannot resist, and it's uh, some things I've made for Karen, uh, my bouquets. I've, I've made a lot of bouquets for Karen over the years, the last two years, really. And these are things mostly from our gardens. I'm not, it's not, but this, these are. They're just, I mean, just, um, you see, and the reminders of this ephemeral transitory beauty that's alive and wonderful. And so it, it just, it's a way of exploring. So these are like, like little gifts I give to her from the garden. And I just make them up and show them to her. And that way I'm, I'm leveraging beauty and amplifying his glory and his goodness and uh, letting her and us and me share in that wonder and that, that awe. So what I'm trying to do is to help you grasp um, today. What I want you to do is be a student of nature, train yourself to see, start noticing things, look at things in, in a different way. And look at the leaves, look at the things that you, take, that you didn't see before. And the more you do that, the more you're going to actually be able to see more things so that your acuity will grow as you continue to do this. Does that make sense? So through practice and habituation, because then it becomes an exercise in worship and wonder. So when you go out and you're driving, look at the trees and notice what you often don't look at. And appreciate the, the flowers when you're walking. And notice these things that are otherwise going to be overlooked. And that, that I think, is a, is a critical theme for us to consider. So in doing that, then, I want to give you some, ask you the question of what can you do? What, what and things can you do together? So how, how can you amplify? Because the word of God and the world of God go together. And so the more you appreciate the word of God the more you, and the world of God, they amplify each other so that you get eyes to see that and the outside in of the world points, to, the outside points to the, to the interior and the word of God is inside out. And the more I appreciate the world, the more I appreciate the word, the more I appreciate the one who made it and the, so they go together. Does that make sense? The idea of the, your amplification of the, of the maker and the, world, the word of God with the, um, the world that he's made. And science is giving us access to things we've never been able to see before. So that's my desire for you is to, uh, to see that in, that in that way. One last thing I'll show you here. This is a hibiscus I saw the other day just outside of a restaurant, which I would normally in the past, I assure you have missed because it was an obscure place. But my eyes kind of like looking, looking to see what can I do to see him as his manifestation. He's given me these senses. He's made this world, and he wants me to see him in that and to see what does it tell me about the living God. Now, this is just gratuitous. You don't need this extra stuff, but this is just a marvel and a wonderful thing. And I was feeling this hibiscus and touching it. Now, you'll feel a little bit odd when you first do this, but it's a good thing for you to do. So I want you to ask yourselves, how can you train yourself to behold the glory of God in his created world in a way that you have not done before. You're about how, and you, how you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and your works are, my, are wonderful, and my soul knows it very well. So you look at your hand, the opposable thumb, all the things that we have. The more we learn about these things, the more amazing we become. 
So let's just spend a few minutes asking how we can do that, become more attuned to worship and to leverage the visible world to point beyond itself to the unseen and the eternal. We were talking about, one of the men in the phone call was talking about how taking a retreat is so valuable, but mountains are, are something that just reveal the glory of God. And just seeing photos that I was privileged of seeing these wonderful things with Karen um, up in uh, the uh, Montana and then also in um, um, near Banff and Jasper in Canada. Um, just looking at these things again, there's something about that majesty that brings us up elevates our, high, our minds to things that are higher than us and points upward to him. And then at night, the, the, the study of the, st the stars. So my encouragement for you is to begin to be a, more of a student intentionally of nature. What did you come up with in your... In your um... Lewis is going to share. Lewis is going to share a thing? He shared it. I don't know what I thought, but it was fascinating. Okay. Is this on? Can, yeah, it's on. Um, I was just telling them uh, about five years ago when I was a scout leader, we took them to California and we went to the Redwood Forest and we went up Mount oh, Whitney yeah. mm. and then we hiked 85 miles into Yosemite. But the <laughs> aesthetic is just part of it because I was talking about when you're in the Redwood Forest, mm. the bark of those trees is about 12 inches thick and it's soft and spongy. It's very funny to touch. It's not like any other bark you've ever felt. Of the redwood? And of the redwood trees. And it, what it is, it's a fire blanket. So they, the, all their competition is burned down, and they survive the fire. And their um, pine cones, which are about the size of a walnut, very yes. insignificant, they only germinate when heated the fire. like popcorn, yeah. and they mm -hmm. pop. So it's not just that they look beautiful and they're gargantuan in size. Their whole design was to survive fire mm -hmm. it's it and get the design the at that, pr that point that's when it opens up right and that's when it because yeah, you can't break them open otherwise it's just amazing yeah wonders and marvels and and have i spoken to you of the sea again you see you're it's just, uh, so valuable that you bring all of these things to our attention and now we should really be more intentional as parents and grandparents to show these things to our children yeah. so they have an appreciation of God and, and bring them closer to God through this. Yes, that's exactly right. Having be Looking through that and you see the handiwork of God. So when I look at the, the, just the play on light, the structure, it's somehow pleasing to behold that. And people often pass it over and no, don't even notice that that splendor. This is in New Zealand and uh, the glacier and so forth. It's wonders and marvels and beauties that um, kind of dazzle the eye and uh, just cause you to see the glory of God in new ways that you hadn't seen before. Yes. Just a quick comment um, about, um, well, one thing, all of this stuff is made to be disposed of. All the stuff that we're looking at, Jesus said that, you know, today you look at the lily and Solomon and all his glory was not arrayed like this. And tomorrow it's cast in the oven and it's really like nothing. But it's there for a reason, as you're saying. And I was telling the guys I uh, was having a really ticked off day at work and I went outside and in this rose bush, there's a little teeny spider the size of a pencil lead. And they made a perfect spider web mm -hmm. that if all of us together took tractors and rulers and whatever we could not make it as symmetric <laughs> we couldn't even make it but it has approximation a brain of it yeah. yeah the brain the size of a pinhead <laughs> could make something that ornate and god's like you're worried about what and that's what i see when i see all this you're we're worried about what yeah. god's got all the details from fingerprints to eyes to dna down but yet we worry about what tomorrow is going to bring right that's right uh, this, the, the, these just are, are moments of beauty that uh, they remind me of experiences that, that we share with others and we want to share it with others. There's something about noticing and then sharing beauty with other people and beginning to cultivate the eyes to see and the ears to hear. It's a wonderful thing. Someone was, there was a, yes. I just wanted to share that uh, I, I appreciate the diversity of all nature that God has created. And 
the thing that I think goes beyond the diversity of it is that it all works together in a unity. And I think the scripture that points that out most is Romans 8, where uh, God says that all things work together. And I think that's what our purpose is to find out how all things work together. Yes. And try to cultivate that. That's right, because everything, and they, they work together, not in isolation. And so how, uh, how can I thank God for a thing I do not want? Because I can discern that he's, as in his word tells me, that he's going to redeem what he allows. And as a consequence, it's going to actually be working for a way that would be better than what I would expose, I, I understand. And we all know that we, we learn much more through our sufferings than through our, through our successes. And so we gain insight in that. But it, it trains us to see, look, sit, fix your eyes on him. So by looking at the natural world, I can fix my eyes on Jesus as well. And by, so it, it amplifies, it's a visible amplifier of worship. It's a force multiplier if we use it that way. And that's what I'm seeking for us uh, collectively together. So that's what we're going to be, that's what we're talking about here then is about the stop, look, and listen. So we're going to be, uh, next time we're going to be looking to, to see, cultivate wonder, curiosity, and submission. So I'm going to be showing you some lovely things that, that we can behold together.